Hello, everyone. Welcome to the British Boxing Blog podcast. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Lee Eaton from MTK Global, um, coming from uh, from the bubble for the Jazz of Dickens Golden Contract uh, final. Hello, Lee. How are you doing, mate? You good? Hey, all good, mate. All good. Just on our 24 hour bang up at our test. So, I saw the hotel board. For those that don't know, like, how does that work, Lee? What, how does your week look like from sort of now till till Wednesday? Uh, basically, obviously, people turn up on the Monday. Um, everybody gets tested. Sort of have to fill out some forms, get tested. Um, and then once they've been tested, they go straight to their room. And nobody's allowed out their room till they have the negative results. Um, so... Obviously, there there is a training room where the fighters have to train. Um, obviously, that gets they have to wear full PPE on the way there and stuff like that. And then obviously that gets um, fogged every single time. So it's a bit of a system that goes with it, but obviously it just needs to be done. Must be a bit heart and mouth for you at the minute because obviously this fight fell through once before because of COVID. You must be a bit bit nervous waiting for those results to come back in, eh? Yeah, well, obviously, with Jazz or Dickens doesn't need to be tested again for 90 oh, days. Yeah. So, obviously, now it's just fingers crossed that Ryan passed. But, obviously, Ryan's team was all tested last week um, as a precaution, and they're all, all OK. So, fingers crossed, um, everything goes ahead with the... Obviously, the, the other main fight, Belotniks and Serge Michel have both been in. They've all been in already and already been tested since they've been here. And then they've been tested again today. So, um, fingers crossed, all, all will be well. Man, what sort of impact would it be? Who would be the worst person to test positive? If you tested, is that the whole show done? Or is it you've been separate? No, that's me. That's just me gone home and get to sit on the couch. <laughs> Watch it on the no, telly with the rest of us. Yeah, we, listen, I don't want no, well, listen, no, I don't want no positives. We've had enough of them over the last few months. Um it's just more of an headache than anything. How have you found it, mate, the whole boxing and lockdown? I know MTK were like one of the first, you know, organisations to get going again and putting on your shows from Wakefield and stuff. Yeah. And John O'Carroll, Maxi Hughes, feels yeah. like a long time ago now. Like, how have you found the whole experience? Yeah, um, not as enjoyable, obviously. Um, the, having no crowds, it's just, it's not, it's not the same, um, and it's, it's a lot more headaches involved, obviously, um, with the shows and that. Obviously, I do, I organise all the boxing side. Obviously, we've got Ian Ritchie, who's our events manager, and he does all the, like, the events side and all the PPE side and all that, so I don't have anything to do with that, so I've been quite lucky with that. But obviously, the but a lot of a big problem is they fight in the boxing ages, so they don't want to renew their medicals till they know they're going to be fighting and stuff like that. So that's the biggest headache we've had so far. So outside of you and Ian, um, obviously we've actually we know Ian, we met him in the MTK Scotland days, top bloke. Outside of you two, how big is the team that it takes to, to run an event? Is that massively different from when there is a crowd, or is it a similar scale operation? Yeah, do you know what? We're probably having more people down with us at the minute due to obviously the, the things we have to put in place and stuff. Um, obviously, it's me, uh, me, Ian on on, for, on fight week. It's me, Ian, Martin, uh, Clifford, Lewis, um, and a couple of others during these shows. Uh, um, but during obviously uh, that, there's not so many. So you need to be organising. How have you? Uh, how, how have you enjoyed the golden contract so far? Lee? It seems to it seems to go down, you know, very well with with fans. Definitely, I think, obviously, like a sort of domestic version of the Super Series, you know, and it, it really sort of yeah you know, some cracking fights, doesn't it? Yeah, do you know what the um, I've really enjoyed the golden contract. We've gone from obviously uh, when we done the first quarterfinals. Uh, I think it was pretty sure it was the featherweights. The quarterfinals. I remember. Obviously, Davey Oliver Joyce and all that when they was all picking their fighters and that we was all jumping up and down, excited. And then Ryan Walsh versus Sakaras, Lee Wood versus Davey Oliver Joyce, and everyone else. As we're, we're all boxing fans, 
do you know what I mean? And to see them fights getting picked out, it was quite obviously exciting. Um, so no, listen, it's been it's been great. We've had some good, really good fights in, involved in the tournament. Um, looking forward to Wednesday for the uh, two finals. I think Wednesday could be the best yet. Jazza Dickens, Ryan Walsh. It's such a hard fight to pick a winner, that isn't it? That's, it's well, it's WBO fight. number one versus IBF number three. So two top-rated, well-ranked fighters against each other. So um, obviously, Serge Michel versus Ricard Belotnik's. Ricard Belotnik's been obviously the shock of the tournament. He's come through two very good fighters so far. So he's going to be full of confidence. Um, Danny Danny Darko versus Harlem Eubank on the undercard. An absolutely unbelievable fight. Uh, both top, top boys. And um, obviously the winner will go on. But even the loser will still go on. But obviously it will just be a minor setback. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, this is a good show all around. A lot of um, up-and-coming talent on the undercard too. And how do you at MTK manage to put on so many competitive fights? Like it seems as boxing fans, we just hear constantly why the, they can't happen, and especially during lockdown. But even beforehand, like MTK building that brand and that reputation for having, like as I say, fifty-fifty domestic fights pretty much all the time, every show. But this is just it's just. It's got to be, isn't it? Fans and people watching TV and watching the shows, they were 50 50 fights. So, and obviously, it's just our, we've always been that way for the last, obviously, since we've, obviously, ESPN and stuff like that. It's always, we've always had well matched fights. Um, and that's just going to carry on continuing. And obviously, during lockdown, fighters have been told, obviously, if you're going to be on the shows, you need to be taking a few risks. And that's why some of our young guns are even taking risks as well, which, like, obviously, Pierce O'Leary fought for an old kid last time, Elliot Well fought for another unbeaten kid and stuff like that. So that's that's what we want. Um, we want... They want to be tested. And obviously, some of them don't want to be hanging around fighting um, 10, 15 journeymen. So they want to go see how good they are and see how, good, obviously, how far they can go in the sport. So, um, no, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air for some of the youngsters and obviously some of the fighters. Now, they all just want to, they all want to proper fight. So, good luck to them. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned Harlem Eubank there and obviously he's a prime example, isn't he? He, he fought Martin McDonough last time, um, got his revenge over him for his amateur loss and then he's straight back into yeah. the cracking fight tomorrow with, uh, with Danny Darko as well. So, I guess he's an example of, of what you're talking about, really. Yeah, and just froze a little bit there, Lee. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mentioned that fire as soon as he got out of the Two seconds. No worries. Go near the window. Two seconds. Yeah, a bit. Stop right, being lazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously after the last fight, um, Harlem's fight against Martin Donner, I mentioned straight away about the Danny Darko fight to his manager, Adam Booth, and then um, Harlem was there and he said, yes, yeah, sweet, no worries. So it is good to see the fighters um, going in with these proper fights. And this is a proper 50-50 fight. A lot of people are talking about this more than the other fights. So I'm looking forward to it. Just touching there on something you've said, you mentioned obviously a boxer on your show and dealing with his manager. The MTK Global as an entity, they've got a bit of the promotion, a bit of the management and something called these advisory deals. How does it all work? And just like what sort of responsibility do you have? Are you exclusively on the promotion side? Do you speak to the management side? I know you've probably, you've gone through this with us in messages before, but just for the public, how does it all work? Yeah, well, listen, obviously we have um, we have a management side, obviously, and we've got a promotional side. Our main, obviously, mainly the promotional side, um, and I work with all the managers, obviously, with the, the, my team, obviously, I, we suggest fights. We find out who's going to be on what card, then we suggest, find out what, what fights we can make, what good fights we can make, then we make a card up. And obviously, I speak with their manager. Their manager speaks with the fighter, and we just—it's just all done like that, really. It's quite—it's quite separate from the 
Still there, mate? Is he frozen on yours as well? Yeah. It says his bandwidth's low, but I don't know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just means his obviously signal's not great. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Still there? I'm here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you. I was going to say, should we try knocking the video off if it's just the audio or that? Yeah, let me see. I don't see if I'll do that. Hang on. Stop video. Oh. Is that better? You seem crystal clear Is that there. Better? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. I'll just drop off as well. Yeah. I will just go we'll just go with that. I'll stick some pictures and that up. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say there. So, you know, like, when you get, like, a sort of fighter under your, like, not control, but, like, someone that you work closely with. Like, I know you went to the States with Jay Harris when he had, like, a world title fight over there. Yeah. And that's obviously someone you're close to. Do you, like... Do you see that journey through with certain of the domestic lads? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're obviously close to, to Jane, stuff like that. Is Do you, you know, like, you're obviously working yeah, over yeah, with Jay. Yeah, I'm quite good friends with um, Gary Lockett. So that's how the deal with Jay come about. Right. Um, so obviously, I, I was we signed a deal with Jay. Jay's still managed by Gary. And obviously, he's under us as a promotional deal. So, yeah, because I'm obviously the, the person that got obviously signed Jay and stuff like that. That's why I went to Texas. There's a few fighters, obviously, in the early stages that I, I dealt with and signed with MTK. Mm -hmm. Like Dan Aziz, Sam Gilly and stuff like that. So there's, there's a few others that I, obviously I still, day to day, I still talk to um, and stuff. But I sort of come away from any of the management side because obviously... It being a promoter and management, it doesn't it doesn't work out. It needs to be completely separate. Is that because obviously with the promotion hat on, you're obviously looking to make the best show for the least amount of money, and the managers are trying to then get the yeah. most amount of money oh, for the exactly fighters. That, exactly that. So obviously, this and there's always little um, backwards and forwards um, discussions regarding obviously fights oh no I don't want that fight for him or yeah I want more money and so that's that's just part of the business and that's why you can't really be obviously people say MTK Global this and it is one company but they are completely separate really there's people that work on the promotional side and people work on the management side. How did you get into the business Lee for people that don't know? Um, obviously, I was, one of my best mates is John Wayne Hibbert. So, obviously, when he was on the Frank Warren shows, Eddie Earn shows and stuff like that, I was always around the boxing business and that, um, being around the shows and stuff. And then, um, I think it's 2012, one of my friends died. Um, and the last conversation we had was about travelling up to up to Doncaster, as it goes, for John Wayne Hibbert versus Tommy Coward. Um, so he died a week before I was meant to go. So the last conversation I had was about boxing. So I decided to do a boxing event uh, in memory of him, like a like a white collar charity fight. And we rate we sold nine hundred tickets, um, and so I raised about ten grand for charity. And then it just went on from there. Really, I have done about fifty, fifty, sixty, seventy. I can't even remember, put a number on it of the like, unlicensed boxing shows. Um, and then I met uh, John Wayne Hibbert versus Tommy Martin. I met the MGM boys at the time. And obviously I had a good chat with them. And then it just went on from now, really. So basically chatting, chewing people's ears off uh, the show and got me the MTK role, really. Uh -huh, there you go. Stephen, there's hope for us yet. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is, right? Do you, uh, do you still love it as much now, Lee, as you ever did? Like, does it... Is the times where you know you think, God, I'm on the road again, or yeah, it, it, has, it has his, it, yeah, it has his moment too. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah and obviously, um, I'm a massive boxing fan anyway, but not as I don't watch as much boxing now because I'm around it so much. You sometimes I, need I, a switch I can't sit there normally. I used to sit there, yeah, I used to you sit there and watch every fight and every show, but now. I, I can't do that, so <laughs> I, I do get, um, if if it's on, I'll have it on in the background, but I won't religiously sit there and watch every single fight sort of thing. Just going back to Wednesday, Lee, in the Golden Contract, do you think do you think that's something 
you would do again, or is it was it like a one-off sort of thing? Or <laughs> is it other divisions maybe that sticks out for you to try? Yeah, listen, we've um, there's been there's been a few little talks and stuff like that. Nothing's really um, been confirmed or anything like that, but obviously it's been successful. So there's no reason why not. Just on the light heavyweight one, I guess, like without being disrespectful, was that the final that you envisaged or even the final that you wanted? Do you know what I mean? And there's not taking anything away from Belotniks or Michelle, but, you know, it's it's a little, maybe it's a bit random. I guess you were possibly hoping for Jose Burton, sort of Liam Conroy, perhaps, or not? Or is that just the way the tournament goes and that's... Uh, that's uh, Listen, these two deserve to be in the final, so fair play to both boys. Obviously, but when you're, um, it's boxing at the end of the day, you, you can't, you have to search Michelle. So, listen, that's going to be a cracking fight. People are underestimating how good of a fight that's going to be. Can you pick a winner? 50-50, oh, me. <laughs> Absolutely. Defense. Spin So is that you going for a draw and round for a pound then? Still there? I don't know. I can't even. Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? We still here. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear yeah. Got you back. Just dropped out a little bit, Frank. Can you hear me? Got you back, yeah. Yeah, this so this in in the hotel way good. Been on for a bit, so I have to go back on there this week. Yeah, I will, we'll get you on it. So I will get you on at some point. Get you back on when you've got a decent signal. I guess Lee from yeah, a, no worries. We're both there. Uh, he's are we still going? Are we finished or not? Yeah, yeah, go on, carry right, on. Yeah. Keep going. No, I'm just saying. Um, obviously, we're both northeast lads, Lee, both from Gateshead. And how much have you enjoyed coming up here uh, with with MTK Global and? I know you've got close relationships with, with people like Joe Laws and, and stuff like that. And I think, you know, you gave him a bit of guidance after he got beat the other week. Um, yeah, how much do you enjoy the sort of northeast side of it? Yeah, listen, it's great. Always great to come up to Newcastle. It's been a, we've had a good few shows. We've got some good fighters up there. Obviously, Lewis Ritz and Thomas Patrick Ward and that. Um, yeah, Joe, listen, Joe's a good friend of mine. speak with him quite often. Um, we've, we've got to have a um, uh, chat this week as it goes. Um, obviously, have a little chat, see where where he goes forward with his career and stuff. So, let's see what happens there. Um, listen, it's always good night out up Newcastle after as well. So, I can't moan. No, I just need lockdown to end and get back on it. That was another good fight well, the other week. week. That, uh, that Jack Rafferty and Tom Hill fight again. Another sort of bit further down one of your undercards but a good fight nonetheless you know one of them those 50 50s that you're starting to get a bit of a name for you know like yeah taking the risks in lockdown yeah listen tommy will done really well um surprised a lot of people he'll def um he'll def he'll, 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 he'll yeah yeah he's still here, yeah. Mate. yeah no he'll definitely get another opportunity um so but yeah, no, it was a good fight. Jack Rafferty done, obviously done well. Obviously, Jack will, will move on. And um, Tom, listen, Tom will definitely get more opportunities if he comes to have a good go. Uh, he's, a, he's a nice kid. He's got a good trainer. Um, so yeah, no, I look forward to working with him in the future. Another fight you've just announced, Lee, for next year's um, Liam Walsh versus Paul Highland for the British lightweight title. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you were first starting out, did you... Did you think you would get the opportunity to do British title fights on MTK shows, you know, like away from Matt, um, away from Frank Warren? Or was that... You know like what, probably, probably when we first started, probably not, because um, it was only um, it was only small shows at first. And then obviously when we had we had, put, had David Price on, uh, one of our Brentwood shows and stuff, and it just started growing from now. But obviously we've done, we've done a few British fights now, obviously European title fights and stuff like that. So... Um, I need a proper. The, obviously, the next step will be a, 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 a world title. Um, so yeah, it's it's it keeps growing. Um, Liam Walsh versus Paul Island Junior is a great fight. Yep. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure I'm pretty confident in Liam to come away with a British title uh, uh, in his second 
can wait and then move on to he's got to move on to world level. You think that's the ultimate aim then for an MTK show, a uh, world title fight? Is that possible? Do you think away from the big, you know, the big, the big two? Yeah, and world title fights, um, UK broadcast stuff. The things that obviously that's it. It'd be great for MTK, but at the minute we're just doing doing our thing, and that's all we can do. Keep doing our thing, putting on good even fights, and um, what will be will be. You have a favourite fight or memory since you started at MTK MGM? Any favourite experiences overall? Um, yeah, obviously Mick Conlon's uh, um, show in Belfast will always be probably career. Um, obviously a co-promotion with Bob Arum being in the ring. Is uh, through another um, night. There's this bit selling out your call, um, for the first time. I like shows that have been good and obviously big memories, and that obviously just want to keep making busy. Yeah, like I imagine those sort of yeah. those. I imagine those sort of memories and experiences are just like there to inspire. He's gone again. Wait, should we wrap that up? I uh, shall we and just leave it there and sort uh, of. I ping, we... ping him a message on Twitter, just thanking him for coming on, and that I'll try and I'll chop obviously this bit off the end. I'll try and like there's nothing else I can do really, but I'll we'll put it All together, right. put it out there, and. Should we put? Should we end it with like a conclusion or something, or like a thanks for coming on or something, or should we just like put it blank? Um, I hold on. So we both just like to thank Lee for his time and obviously the effort he's put in there, despite some technological difficulties. We will hopefully rearrange and, and get back onto him once he's out the bubble and uh, once he's back in the modern world. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Just to echo what you said. Thanks to thanks to Lee for coming on. Shame about the sound, but I'm sure when you do listen to it, there's still a lot to take away from it and some fascinating answers as well. So really do appreciate his time.